Let's talk about this whole idea about how long can you make your money last. I just turned 60 this year and it's been a real benchmark for me to think about retirement and the potential change in situations between living in one location and potentially moving to another full time and all the options that are available to us as we approach retirement. And so this is as much for people in the same shoes as me, age 60 or approaching 60, and thinking about that sort of change in life and those situations which might mean we budget in different ways and we consider how we've been investing our money as we approach retirement. But also for those of you who are far younger and are thinking about the future and what it might look like, and to give you some insight and some tips on things that may well work. Any day in which you spend less money than the previous day or any week in which you spend less than the week prior to that, you are saving money in the sense that you are accumulating money in your bank account that you might otherwise have spent and which is now something that you can use and put into one of your savings accounts or one of your investment accounts so that it will create something going forward over the next few years on the basis of a regular dividend return or some capital growth with what you've bought. Having a no spend a day literally means it costs you nothing and you retain money in your account. It might be the case that you can have a friend round for coffee and cake and a catch up, but you're using product that is in your own kitchen cupboards. It might be that you make a picnic and go out on your own or with your partner for a walk around the park and just enjoy that time without thinking you have to go to an expensive place in the center of town, take your car, pay for parking, pay for valet service. You can avoid all of that simply by having a simple carefree day around the house or taking a picnic out to a place that you both love and which you can really enjoy spending that time together but being away from home. If you're already paying for a streaming service like Roku or Hulu or Netflix, it means you don't have to add any extra cost of going to the cinema. You can prepare a nice meal, watch a film together and enjoy that process without any additional cost over and above what you've already budgeted as part of your monthly streaming package costs. Again, this might relate more to those of you who are at a phase in life where retirement is knocking on the door and a change in circumstances is just around the corner for you. But how many things do you have in your home that you no longer need, you haven't used for a long time, or how much have you even got in the cupboard or in the attic that you don't even know what is there. Things that maybe were bought years ago, wedding presents, birthday presents, things that were a gift to yourself five or ten years ago, or even six months ago, but which have had very little use, and realistically, they could be things that you take from the house, and you take to the goodwill, or you throw away, or you give away, you donate, so that somebody else can take advantage of them and use those things because they enjoy them or because they could enjoy them and they actually need them and will find value in those items. These are things which you no longer use so you can let go of them. It could be a tea and coffee set, it could be kitchen utensils, it could be tools in the garage that you no longer use, it could be items that have been sitting quietly in a spare bedroom in the house and you haven't had any use of them for years. And you don't have to have a garage sale to get rid of these things. You can very easily take a series of photographs on your phone, upload the images with a description to places like eBay or Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. And within a short period of time, people will be saying, yes, please, I'll have that. I'll give you the $20 or the $100 or whatever it is for the item that you've listed and which they have set their sights upon and which you will be happy to get rid of. When that money comes in, let's say you made an extra $2,000 in the next couple of months by letting go of those things, that extra $2,000 could easily generate you an income of 4 or 5 or possibly 6% just invested in some stocks or you put it into cash and you just keep it for when you might need it. Not so much a rainy day account, but an account where you keep a percentage of everything that comes in and you can use that when it's right to create a better return on that money. Or you can use that money to take advantage of a situation when something presents itself and you think, right, I could use that straight away. Have a wander around the house with pen and paper 
and look at your property one room at a time and think, do I need this? When will I next use it? Who might want it within the family so I can give it away or pass it on to them so they can take advantage of it and enjoy it now that I've had the value and the benefit from it? Or would this be useful at a secondhand shop where I can donate it and they can sell it to raise funds for their charity or their cause? Or can I just give it away? Is there somebody in the neighborhood? Is there somebody in the community who would really find value in this item if I let it go? A couple of years ago, I had a job where I didn't need to commute anymore. I was no longer using motorways. My car was useful if I wanted to go to the supermarket and it was raining, or if I wanted to go and visit somebody some distance away and it just seemed a lot easier to turn the key in the ignition and drive down the road in the car to visit somebody a couple of hours away. And certainly when my parents were alive, having a car meant that I and my sons could jump in the car and go and visit their grandparents when we just wanted to be there and to see them in their old age. With their passing, with a change in my employment and a focus more on my home-based writing skills and writing activities, the car has been less and less necessary. And so when I was presented with an opportunity to make a decision about whether to let go of the car, it didn't take any effort. It wasn't any big requirement. All I needed to do was look at my notes and say, how much will I spend on petrol or gasoline for some of you in a year? What will my road tax costs be? What about my insurance? And if I take that number and it adds up to X thousands of pounds or dollars a year, how does that compare with jumping on a train, catching a bus, using a taxi service to make the journeys that I needed to make at that stage in life? I was either getting on a train and traveling down to Nottingham from Yorkshire to visit my mum at home or in her nursing home later, or I was considering, do I need to take a train into the center of the local city, Leeds, for work? Or might I need to use my car to get out at the weekend to go and visit friends or to get out into the countryside and go for a walk or in the urban areas to visit a museum or an art gallery and just enjoy time with friends and family doing the nice things at weekends. It was an easy calculation to make the car was costing me three or four times more than any number of journeys on public transport or the use of taxis to get in and out of shops or to galleries at weekends. So it was easy to list the car for sale. I sold it to a local commercial garage who bought it, having made me a good offer. The next day I went into the garage with the car. They made a transfer to my bank account the same afternoon and I was car free. And I haven't regretted it for a single moment. I'm not suggesting for a minute that you have to get rid of your car or one of your cars. I'm just suggesting that you take account of what you're spending in a year on how your form of transport is serving you and the benefits that you get from that. One of the drivers, and no pun intended on the use of that word, but one of my drivers or my motivators for considering the continued use of my car or the sale and disposal of my car was whether I could use some of the money from the sale of that vehicle to invest into future projects where I would get an actual measurable financial return. And as it turned out, that was very much the right thing to do. On that same travel theme, which I alluded to, I suppose, about the sale of my car and the way that would open up a different way of traveling by public transport. Where we live now, I can take an Uber from the historic city center back to our house in the suburbs, and that's about 30 minutes, but it costs $10 in an Uber or $10 equivalent. The same journey, if I do it using the metro system, the public underground system, from a station right in the city center to a point one kilometer from our house, that costs a 20th of the price. So I'm, I'm paying the equivalent of 50 cents for 30 minutes on the metro system. And if the weather's great, like it is today, I will walk home along a tree-lined avenue, or if it's raining, I will simply get a small public bus for another 50 cents. I haven't lost anything in time because the same journey is 30 minutes from the city center back to the house. But what I have done is I've saved 95% of my transport budget by being a little bit more flexible, a little bit more open, and to be honest, 
just having a good time, maybe chatting with fellow passengers on public transport or having an opportunity to read, which is easier on the metro than it is in the back of a taxi, or simply switching off, enjoying the ride home and knowing that I can invest that extra nine dollars in another project later that week. By saving three Ubers a week, I'm saving almost thirty dollars a week. That's just additional money to be thrown into the same savings pot that my wife and I use for enhancing our future retirement. On that same theme of retirement and considering your situation and circumstances, a couple of years ago I was in my last full-time role and I was working as a housing officer. There was a very difficult, awkward situation in which I was at risk from attack by one of the residents. The whole experience was very traumatic. I didn't feel that supported by the organisation I was working for. As a result of lots of thought after that incident, I left that role and went into something related but without the frontline risk or the frontline danger that I perceived from that first incident. Has anything happened to you recently where you have been forced to re-evaluate your situation and your circumstances and to consider what you might do differently or better or in a new way or from a new angle of approach so that your situation can be enhanced or improved and before something gets out of control or goes way out of order for you? Ask yourself, where do you find happiness? What is it that gives you that emotional fulfillment and that nourishment within your working career that you know you enjoy and which you're very certain and confident that is important for you? What does a balance of work and home life look like? How many hours do you want to work a week as you personally approach retirement or the options available to you for reducing your hours and enhancing your time spent at home or your time spent in hobbies or activities regardless of whether they are financially rewarding but which are emotionally nourishing for you. Could you find a different balance between work life, home life and travel for example? If you can reduce your work hours but get the same income or if you can get the same income but change the environment in which you work for a one that is safer, more enjoyable, where there is more social engagement with colleagues, is that something that would appeal to you? Is that something that might cause you to make that little push, that little shift in your work situation and your work environment for the good, for the better? Of course, a lot of these things are also about mental health and emotional well-being, and that's a massively important aspect of our health for you and I. And making a final point about health is really important. For me this year, like I've said, I've turned 60 and I now know, having had a bad fall earlier this year, which, which I broke my arm very badly and it's taken four or almost five months now for it to feel close to healing, I know that we recover our health at a slower rate as we get older. So I'm very conscious now about the exercise I'm taking with regular walks and activity that will help me to enjoy better health for longer. Can you build exercise time into your day? Can you find a point where you can get off public transport 10 or 15 or 20 minutes before you get home so you can walk that last mile? Is there an opportunity in your lunch break to go to a local park and do several circuits of the park on the footpaths that exist there? Can you and your spouse or your partner enjoy time at the weekends going to local outdoors parks and walking or running or cycling to enjoy those benefits. For me, daily walking for half an hour as something that I in, put into my diary a few months ago has been so productive and it's given me a greater sense of energy but also well-being. While I'm enjoying time in the park, I'm out and about, I'm enjoying that fresh air but I'm also getting the opportunity for thinking time, for being away from my desk, for being away from my computer, I'm coming up with new ideas for manuscripts and enjoying that opportunity to be living my best life. If just one or two of these points have touched a nerve with you and can allow you to explore new ideas for your situation, for your well-being, potentially for your life planning and potential retirement ideas, then I'm really pleased. Thanks for watching and let's catch up again soon.